When Paul learns of Summer's plans to postpone her American course, he urges her not to abandon her aspirations because of him. Later, at the Rover's karaoke night, Paul tells a concerned Billy that he has scheduled them to perform Stand By Me. How will it go? Evelyn is taken aback when she finds an article online identifying Lauren as a sex worker. Roy is adamant that he does not want to know the information. Cassie reads the story regarding Lauren's sex business and admits to Tyrone that it brings up some unpleasant memories for her. Cassie is furious when she discovers Evelyn and Daisy discussing Lauren in the shop. Fees and Evelyn are astonished when Tyrone says Cassie had to turn to sex work in the past. Bobby phones the salon, very furious, and shows Max the story about Lauren. The men head off in quest of Sabrina, determined to discover who notified the newspaper about Lauren's sex profession. Sabrina assures Max and Bobby that she did not leak information to the press, and she is angry that they would think so. Max feels bad as Sabrina storms off. Sarah returns after a property viewing and confesses it was above her wildest expectations. Damon swears to do everything he can to raise the money. Harvey phones Damon from prison and provides him instructions for his role in the robbery. Tommy Orpington, Matt Milburn, the Weatherfield County hero, will announce his plans to relocate to Spain for a new job in forthcoming Coronation Street scenes. The former football player turned painter and decorator has long been a popular among street residents, but their opinion of him has shifted radically in recent months, following the revelation that he has been having an affair with Tracy McDonald, Kate Ford. On Christmas Day, the florist met her new part-time employee, and it wasn't long before she hired him to decorate her bedroom. While husband Steve, Simon Gregson, was on holiday in France, the two took advantage of the chance to have a torrid liaison. The unlucky cab driver even suggested they reaffirm their vows. After packed his things, father-in-law Ken, William Roach, persuaded him that Tracy, not he, would have to depart. Last week, Kevin Webster, Michael Lavelle, learned through the grapevine that Tommy had taken a position as an assistant coach for a football team in Spain, which meant he would be relocating. In the next moments, Steve will struggle to keep the news to himself, eventually blurting it out to an unimpressed Tracy across the pub. Michael Sloan treated himself to a cup of coffee after completing a strenuous workout at an outdoor gym on the stunning Dorset coast while on vacation one year. However, when the accountant went to the lavatory again, he saw that his pee was the color of rose wine, which is not the ordinary. I thought that was a little weird, but maybe I overdid things on the outside gym, says 68-year-old Michael from High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. The next time I went to the toilet, it looked perfectly normal, so I probably wouldn't have done anything about it, but when it happened again about 10 days later, I thought something isn't right, so I booked an appointment with my GP. She was really helpful and requested the many tests I required, including blood and urine testing. Michael, who was 58 at the time, was examined for prostate cancer and underwent a flexible cystoscopy, which involves inserting a camera into the bladder. They discovered a tumor there, he says. That was a shock. The only symptom was the unusual color of his urine. Michael underwent surgery to remove the lump, and he has subsequently had two further operations to remove other tumors discovered during routine follow-ups over the last decade. However, if he had not accepted his hunch that something was wrong all those years ago, the outcome could have been very different. You know best. This is because early detection and treatment of cancer are critical for survival, and you're in the best position to notice anything unusual. Of course, the prospect of obtaining treatment can be overwhelming. The thought of becoming very ill and requiring intrusive treatment for months is daunting, so many of us postpone it. But we should not, because while the number of individuals diagnosed with cancer in the UK is increasing, today, half of us will be in our lifetime. We are considerably more likely to survive. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel Hello, everyone, and don't miss and welcome any to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Two of our favorite Coronation Street characters are in deadly danger next week as Cafe King Roy Crop, who is suspected of murdering Lauren Bolton, is besieged by savage thugs seeking his blood. It's all part of a terrible week for him, as new information emerges that doesn't look good for him, and a move to pay tribute to Lauren and a vigil backfires. 
Lian Battersby is also on the verge of disaster after becoming involved in a potentially dangerous affair. Charmed by a prominent man who exploits her emotions, she appears to be drawn into a cult. In other developments, Tracy Barlow gets awful news, and it's not just the proposition from ex-husband Steve McDonald. And Daniel Osborne is unhappy with Bethany Platt once more. On Monday, March 18, an online sleuth overhears Roy inform Nina and Yasmin that he has been summoned to the police station for an interview. After hearing David and Shauna speculate about if Lauren's father's far-right party is involved, Max decides to pay Reese a secret visit in prison and tell him how Roy is wrongfully accused of Lauren's murder when all he did was clean the flat for her. Later in the cafe, Roy finds himself alone except for two suspicious individuals sitting at a table. When one of them stands up and shuts the door, Roy realizes he is in danger. Amy persuades Steve that it is best if she informs Tracy about Tommy's move to Spain. In the Rovers, Steve can't help but tell Tracy that Tommy has taken a job as a football coach in Spain. Steve offers to Tracy that now that Tommy has left, they should try again with their marriage. Despite the fact that their relationship is still strained and Chesney is sleeping on the sofa, Gemma and Chesney bravely visit Oak Hill alongside Linda and Joseph. But it's evident that something is bothering Joseph. Simon is glad to see Nick and Leon getting along well. When Leon explains that Rowan provided her sound counsel, Simon invites her to the next institute. Rowan is pleased to see her again. In the hotel bar, Leon and Simon compliment Rowan on his seminar. Rowan basks in their compliments and says he hopes to see them again. Lean raids to Nick about the session, which she found uplifting. When Scene reveals that he hasn't told Violet anything about Dylan's situation, Eileen is appalled and insists that she has the right to know. Eileen pressures Scene to call Violet, but Dylan explains that he has already spoken with his mother, who is unable to attend the court hearing because she is in Ibiza. Is he saying the truth? On Wednesday, March 20, Nana is shocked to learn that amateur sleuths have been excavating at the Bat Roost site in search of evidence linking Roy to Lauren's murder. 4. Roy loads his car boot with shovels and garbage bags and heads to the Roost site to make sure everything is in order. But when he returns, Swain is waiting to take him to the police. Is Roy's visit to the Roost location causing him more problems? Nina, Carla, Bobby, Max, Evelyn, Asha and Roy gather for Lauren's vigil in the precinct. However, when Roy addresses the audience and speaks warmly about Lauren and how much she meant to him, several lads make disparaging remarks and record him on their phones. Evelyn, Carla, and Nana advise Roy to keep a low profile until the authorities figure out who killed Lauren. Roy remains steadfast. Nina tells Carla in the cafe that she is worried about Roy. Dylan pleads guilty to carrying a weapon in public. Sean listens, upset. Dylan thanks Sean for his support and swears to get his life back on track after receiving a community service order. Sean and Dylan get home to discover Eileen and Violet, who are plainly upset. Violet glances to Dylan, wondering what he wants to tell her. Eileen reveals that she called Violet about not attending the hearing and learned she had no idea what was going on. Violet tears a strip off Sean for his poor parenting skills, and Sean is stung. Paul is slurring his speech, and when his new PA arrives, she is out of her element and struggles to comprehend him. Billy tried to downplay it, but Summer reminds him they had to face the truth. His speech is worsening. Tommy phones the florist and requests that Amy speak with Tracy on his behalf because he wants to explain himself before leaving. Daniel returns home angry and upset, informing Bethany that he has been suspended from work while he remains under suspicion, and that he has a decent idea who reported him. Despite Tim's worries, Steve joins a dating site and posts a profile photo. On Friday, March 22, Billy informs Summer that he is hesitant to discuss Paul's condition with him due to his intention to commit suicide if the situation worsens.